Hello and welcome to another episode on the Everyday Joy podcast. Today is episode 146 and over on the Everyday Joy Facebook community, I was asking where everyone listens from. Not countries, because I can see that on the back end, um, but physically, where are you in the house or in the car? And it's incredible. Um, Melissa commented, she said, I listen as soon as I wake up, so in my bed, I'll save you guys from the image. Um, Glenda says, in my bathroom. Room, uh, while getting ready. Uh, Monica says, I listen as soon as I get into the car for the school drop-off and then on my way home I talk to the kids about the episode. Denise said, I listen first thing in the morning and this is my bedroom ceiling and she posted a gorgeous picture of these butterflies. Butterflies are really significant for me just on a side note. So yeah, I just think that's such a beautiful image to wake up to. So be a part of the Facebook community I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's a great space lots of extended conversations and I know you'll want to unpack today's chat on there as well. Today we're actually talking about being rich but we're not talking about money we're talking about something a little different and in my opinion something that is far more valuable. Let's get into today's Bible verse. You are rich in everything, in faith, in speaking ability, in knowledge, in the willingness to help, and in the love you learned from us. So now we want you to be rich in this work of giving too. That's 2 Corinthians 8 verse 7 ERV. Once again, I have got Jackie here in studio with me. Hello, Hello. Jackie. Hi, Joy. We actually recorded um, these episodes in two batches. And last time you were wearing a distressed denim jacket. Today you're wearing the coziest, chunky knit cardigan. I want Uh, it. Yeah, I've gone full Nana this morning. And it's a cotton chunky (laughs) chunky knit cardi. And also with the the floral dress. So, you know, (gasps) yeah, full Nana and very comfy and loving it. I feel like Nanas are onto something. They just know what's best. I just know. We should just listen to them earlier on, I think. Absolutely. (laughs) So, Jackie, what are your first impressions of this verse? And also, two for one special, what does this verse (laughs) tell you about who God is or what matters to him? Yeah, I think what it says about God is that he's he's just loving and generous and he wants the best for us. Um, And and for me, my my first impression is I'm rich in everything and you question that because immediately that association of rich in our world is financial, Mm. right? But not Oh, it's not that it's not rich in a worldly sense, but we have everything you know we need to live a full and productive spiritual life, to live a life of service to Jesus and to others, and we have that through our faith mm. in, in Jesus. Yeah, so. and I like that. I like the spin because I think we can very quickly look at this verse and think, oh, riches, oh, money. This yeah. is about finances. But you're saying, and it's such a great first impression. There's more to that in this verse. Oh. I think, yeah, I mean, it does spell it out. It's that immediate thing where you go, oh, it's rich. But then it's like, you're rich in faith, Mm -hmm. in speaking ability, in knowledge, in willingness to help, in love. Yeah, and we got that all through through Jesus. So. Yeah. So what does this verse tell you about who God is or what matters to him? Um, just that he is loving and generous, I think. He's given us all that we need and he's given us everything we need to take our focus off that worldly aspect of it as well and focus it on him and on our spiritual journey as well. Mm. Now, speaking of journey, um, for those listening right now, Jackie, correct me if I'm wrong, but you became a Christian in your early 30s, I believe. Yes, yes. yes. That's and right. um, you're a single mom. you've got two amazing adult kids and you love reading books. I think we've touched on that a little bit, but uh, I know that you've had a whole lot of other things go on in your life. How has this verse come alive in the things that you've experienced? Yeah, and it was great. It was actually really great to think about this, you know, in preparation for today, Joy, because what I realized is that I'm I'm rich in family um, and it's, you know, I've gone through and suffered through you know great pain and loss in that sphere in my life but I'm still rich in that sphere you know I have two amazing wonderful adult kids who've also been through so much but you know they're kind and they're loving and they're generous and that's there's a richness to that yeah Um, and I have chosen family all around me I have you know six or seven friends um, and their families that are my family. They're the they're the three AM friends, yeah. The one you know, the ones that you would answer the phone for, and the ones that you know would answer the phone for you. Yeah, and do whatever needed to be doing at three AM. Mm. Yeah. So you alluded a little bit earlier to, um, well, first of all, 
I'm I'm so thankful that you are in a space where you can say you're rich in family, but you did allude to a time previously where that might not have been the case. Yeah, absolutely. There's and I can, and and I think the the juxtaposition of that, you know, richness is loss. Mm. Yeah. So um and now I've I've experienced quite a bit of loss in that in that sphere I guess you'd call it so you know my my parents went through a fairly ugly divorce when I was in my early 20s my mum passed away when she was only 55 Um, my kids were only 10 months old and two years old um, when she passed away and that was that was really difficult that also led to a breakdown in some family relationships Um, I've had family members who've suffered hugely from complex mental health issues um, and that's affected everyone around them and changed those relationships as well Mm. Um, you know my favorite aunt who really just was that figure of you know unconditional love to me and my kids once my mum passed away um, she passed away really suddenly I myself went through a divorce that wasn't you know no divorce is pretty, but it really wasn't pretty. <laughs> mm. um, and I could go on and on, but because of because of all this loss, because of all the pain, is who I am mm. today. Um, and I bring all this into my relationships now, and it's taught me how how to love and and find that richness. Yeah, in those relationships, I think it's really remarkable how. I mean, thank you for sharing a snapshot. You really don't know, as a side, you really don't know what people have no, walked through. No. You never know what people are dealing with. Yeah. And guaranteed, there's someone listening right now, and maybe they were rich in family, and some things have happened similar to you, Jackie, um, circumstantial or just, you know, people passing away. And they f- they maybe feel poor in that right now. They feel like, I was rich. I had people I could count on. I had that picture-perfect life and now I'm in the void and so they're in that in between phase so you've journeyed through that Jackie you had that that rich life you had things happen and you've been able to rebuild and come out the other side and say I still have that what would you say to someone who's in that void in that middle where they where they had a rich environment and now they don't first of all hang on like just it it does get better I'm a firm believer in um, you don't pass through stages of grief you don't get over grief you integrate grief because grief is an expression of love towards somebody who you can't love on anymore Um, hang on there's a verse in the Bible I can't remember where it's from but but the for the joy set before me he endured and it's talking about Jesus and what he knew was the final destination but the pain that he had to go through on the way to get there and I always think that if we can just hang on if we can just keep that that hope that faith the that love that we know that that God and Jesus have for us if we can just keep that set before us and know that it will come you know, it's not, it's not nice now, it's not pleasant now, it, there's grief, there's loss, there's pain and hurt. But if you can keep that set before you in your mind's eye, mm. yeah. And your children would have grown up watching you deal with all of this and walk through all of this. Did you have any conversations with them about it or have they ever come to you as adults now and unpacked how you journeyed through it and how they witnessed you journeying through it? I, oh, we haven't had so much specific conversations. We did have an interesting, um, something came up recently where my son was like, but, you know, it was, I, I want to celebrate this loss. And I said, well, that that's great. And because he wanted to do something else around a date that was a, that it was a significant date of loss mm. for all of us. Mm. And he said, oh, you know, because I love to celebrate this. And I was like, oh, that's really interesting because of that day to me represents a day of loss and of pain and, you know, to use an overused word at the moment and trauma, like legitimate trauma for me. Mm. And it was interesting for me to see that um, through making that day a celebration for them as they grew up, that's how they saw it. Wow. 
Yeah. Wow. So it, I, we didn't talk about it in the moment. Um, he's away at the moment, so we'll probably have, you know, I'd love to unpack it with him a bit more. Um, but yeah, it was interesting, for, really interesting for me to see that, no, we turned that. And as far as they were concerned, that was a day of celebration. Mm. So yeah, I think that's, yeah. Yeah. And I think the reason that I, I asked that question is because often you never know who's watching you yeah. as you are journeying through things. And for you listening right now, I know it can seem all consuming what you're going yeah. through. I love what you said, Jackie. Just hang on. Hang on to your faith that the best is yet to come. But also know that there will be others watching you and seeing how you um, handle the situation. Maybe little ears and little eyes, but also in Gig's story where she talked about her salvation mm. story, she used to work, and it's a great episode. I'll link it in the description below. But Gig's uh, manager had um, a complete breakdown, like a family breakdown, came into work and she was singing worship songs all through the day. Um, And just earlier that morning, her husband left. And Gig said that for her was what got her to think about faith in Jesus because she was like, this doesn't make sense that this person would worship and behave like this at such a traumatic time. And that got gig on her faith journey and so for you listening right now god is doing something big through your pain and it's maybe not what you want to hear right now but often it is the truth there's always someone who's witnessing how you're journeying through things absolutely and and i don't think that that pain is ever you know i'm so glad i went through that that was awesome because i came out the other side and this happened yes there can be silver linings yes there can be great outcomes but you know live you can live through that with god and come out the other side with that innate joy that Jesus brings doesn't make sense it doesn't look good in the natural but it's a knowing that God is with you as we come to the end of today's episode there's two things I want to focus on for those of you who are grieving For those of you who feel that loss of that person or that connection, my encouragement to you today is this. Hang on. Hang on. It's going to get better. The second thing I want to focus on today for the rest of us is the fact that you and I have this incredible opportunity to look at our friends and family and say to ourselves, we are rich. I think we're very quick to write off a quality relationship as a point of wealth. And we focus too much on all the other things that the world classifies as wealth. So my application for you today is this. If you have uh, a great community around you, Even if you have a mediocre community around you, could you spend some time today acknowledging that you are wealthy and you are rich because of what God has given you and who God has surrounded you with? And if that compels you to write a text message and send it through to a parent or a mentor or a niece or a granddaughter, do it. Because we so forget to acknowledge where the real riches in our life lie. And I'm going to do it as well. The moment I hear this episode, I know who exactly I'm going to reach out to and say, my life is richer because you are in it. So there we go. Two ways to apply today's Bible verse. Hey, Jackie's going to be back again tomorrow. So excited. Look forward to catching up then. 